Good morning, everybody. My name is Coy Rosen, and you're listening to The Story Podcast. Today, I have on a super awesome guest, a returning guest. But before we get into that, I have a few announcements to make. Tonight, there are a lot of things happening here in the city. There's a lo- local Lancaster Strummer Jam that is happening featuring bands like the Ogham Stones, Leo DeSanto will be there. Nice. Uh, yeah, uh, it's all music uh, by Joe Strummer and for his charity to uh, for his foundation. Check it out. It's, it's, it's an awesome event. starts at around 1 o'clock in Phantom Power in Millersville. Also tonight will be a concert. Catherine Britt, the Australian country song, singer-songwriter, she imagined uh, Taylor Swift or Carrie Underwood of Australia. That's who she is. She's coming around doing a tour in uh, around the U.S., and she's going to be here at TELUS, 6 p.m. Tickets are like 15 bucks. Another announcement is that this will be the final month. No, sorry. September is the final month to pre-order your shirt or sweatshirt with, of the first 50 guests, which includes... Uh, today's guest, RJ Conrad. Uh, be sure if you want one of those shirts or hoodies, you can DM me on uh, through the store, through Facebook. Through, if you know me personally, you can just send me a text. Uh, I'll, I'll hook you up. Those uh, shirts and hoodies will be coming in October. With all that said, I have Mr. RJ Conrad of Rascal Revival, a six-piece band. Would you like to uh, describe your band? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, great to be here. Yeah, our our six pieces consist of acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass guitar, drums, violin, and saxophone. Um, I I'm the lead singer and I write most most of the songs. Um, the band makes them a hundred times better once I bring them to them. Um, they make some great suggestions and um, our new bassist Henry Devorek, who's been on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe he's, he's going to start singing some backup vocals for us as well. So nice. I'm, I'm excited to hear, hear what we come up with here. I think one of our practices is coming up next week uh, for our show next month at the Anglewood on September 30th. So yeah, go ahead and dro- drop some dates while we're all oh, talking yeah. dates. Um, yeah. yeah. So two weeks prior to that show, on September 16th, we will be releasing a new single called Put Your Shoes On. Um, I wrote that song with my daughter. And then, like I said, two weeks after that release, we'll be uh, at the Anglewood on September 30th. Uh, I believe that show is from 8 to 11 p.m. And we've got the whole whole time to just jam. We don't have, don't have an opener. That's We're great. just selling some tickets and getting as many people to come out, come out as we can and have, have a grand old time. And speaking about Put Your Shoes On, we have, we have, uh, we talked about that the, the last podcast we did. Yes. Uh, about yeah, uh, was, how, how you formed a song with yeah. your daughter over quiet time. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and it's funny, now recently I started. I actually played that song with her once at a gig. Uh, they came out to a local pizzeria really? last month, and and she she didn't have a microphone or anything, but she sang along oh, and played her violin and whatnot. Um, well, that's adorable. It was adorable. We got pictures and and video. It was a, it was a whole thing. But <laughs> um, it's funny. She she has now tried to give credit to my youngest daughter, um, saying that she was the one putting her shoes on. So when I asked Nora, said, "What would you like to write a song about?" Then um, she said. I want it to be called Put Your Shoes On. And now when I tell that story, if she's around, she'll jump in and say, it's because Matilda was put, trying to put her shoes on. So she's kind of given her some credit that's also in the process really as well, which is pretty funny. You, uh, that's, and that's I had so no funny. idea until recently that that was, the, that was the even one. why she came up with it. I thought that she just like looked around and saw shoes. Or I, don't, I don't know, but she came up with the answer pretty quickly. But now, now she... Even months later, she rec- she recognizes what she saw and why that was a part of it. And she's learning to create her own story. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. Like, uh, you know, through lines. Right, yeah. Oh, she's, she'll sit there sometimes and just, like, scribble on paper saying she's writing a story. And that's adorable. Kid, kids are great, man. Yeah, I, that's, that's something I've heavily realized as, as teaching children how yeah. to swim. Kids, right. are, kids are awesome and are uh, a never-ending source right. of inspiration. Inspiration, entertainment. Entertain- Whatever you need. <laughs> oh, they're so funny. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're brutally honest, and mm-hmm. uh, and the way they connect things sometimes, it's like, oh, you're not wrong, but I would never would have thought to connect it. It's it, it, it's it's you got the right answer, but the wrong formula. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, uh, but it, it's it's so eye opening. Um, just the way kids process things, think through things, and uh. 
we have the song here. If, uh, um, do you want to talk about that? Do you uh, talk about the lyrics? Talk about yeah, sure. Because uh, um, we last last podcast we talked a little bit about it with the du- some of maybe the double entendre that was going on. Yeah, uh, some some of the f- not intentionally philosophical things. Yeah. Um. So the song started out as a very basic thing. Like she, I, she said, she wanted the first line to be "Put your shoes on." So we we ran from there, and um, something we try to do regularly is just get outside even if it's not the greatest outside just get outside get some vitamin d get covered in rain whatever um have some fun yeah have some fun and and that's something that i I feel like i've almost had to teach them they don't necessarily have that sometimes they're just like oh i'm so comfortable here inside Mm. and it's hot outside or whatever um so we kind of ran from there and uh and i would ask her questions about like so this song or this word has X, Y, and Z that rhyme with it, and what do you think we should use here? And one of the cool things about working with a four-year-old is they don't know any cliches. No, yeah. So I try to avoid cliches. I have a song. I actually have a song from our our first EP um, when we were a three-piece or four, I guess a four-piece for the EP um, that kind of just makes fun of cliches, and it, there's a ton in it. I just overuse cliches and I make fun of of um, People that, that use cliches, and it's called They Say. Um, but Of course. <laughs> right? But uh, they, when I was working with Nora, like, like I said, she has no, no, concept. no concept of what cliches are. So I'm like, okay. Like, to me, that's a little bit cliche, but we'll, we'll, let's work with it. And what that did was, was between the simplicity and, and the, the random cliches, instead of the whole thing being cliche like I did with They Say, um, it almost made it like, like, it was like a deeper like a phys- philosophical meaning and what was really cool was by the end it almost reads as though it's to her which for me was just like a, a really cool full circle thing i love f- full circle moments and and it was just so cool to to to, to not even realize i was writing a song to her mm. but to finish it and then read it and like play it and look at it with her and be like this is actually like kind of to you in a way like this is some life lessons yeah. that i hope you carry along with you and I even snuck a little dad joke. The last line of the last verse is, um, keep your body moving. You see, you can't go without. Like, <laughs> you generally, if you, you physically can't go anywhere if you don't move. But right. the idea is be active and take care of yourself and, and, and um, just make healthy choices. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no. There's some, uh, but the, I, when, when, I, when I wrote that line, I was like, oh, I have to use this. Yeah, right. I had a couple other options. I'm like, I'm... I told Nora, I was like, I'm making this decision. This one, this one's my line. This one's, like, that's my yeah. line. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on all the other lines with you, but I'm making this choice. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and, uh, especially as a collaborative songwriter, that's yeah. something you have to, and whether it's a you know a four year old or not. Right. <laughs> yeah. She's her name's on all the licensing. Oh wow, that's yeah. super cool. Yeah, as a, as a songwriter, so. That's awesome. I mean, she I, get paid. She will. <laughs> <laughs> she gets fed. <laughs> she, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> I'm her dad. So. Yeah. Right. Um. Uh, so yeah, you yeah, know, so, uh, even looking at the lyrics, but you know, put your shoes on. Let's go outside. It, it's nice today. No need to hide. Uh, you have your son drinking. Grab some water. Grabbing a snack. Yeah, that's, that's things that we make sure. Or right, we're heading out. Whether if it's if it's for a walk or we're going to run an errand or going to to the park or something. You have your water. Like when's the last time you ate? Mm. I mean, I, I didn't put like go to the bathroom before you, before you leave the house into this song. I just figured I'd leave that part out, but. <laughs> But there's a couple things that we just we make sure we, we do regularly, and I feel like her and I worked up worked together to come up with that because I had a couple other ideas on what to do with that verse. But once we came to that idea, we both understood that like that was going to be the uh, the, the idea of that verse. Have you ever tried to write another song with her? Not yet. Um, I, it's funny because I wrote this song with her, and my son is very big into music too. So he knows all the words to it because we've played it so many times. So he was in the same video and pictures. Like he's playing my ukulele. That's, um, that's all adorable. It, it was it was awesome and it was funny. Um, not to divert too much from what we were talking about here, but he stayed up on stage for a song or two after Nora left. He, he, we played "Put Your Shoes On" and then he stayed up, and I'm sitting there jamming and I forget what I was playing. But he looks up to me and he asked me, "Is this mine now?" Is this mine? <laughs> Like the, talking about the ukulele, he has his toy ukulele at home, and he always wants to play mine. I let him do it on special occasions, and this was one of them. And I was busy, 
trying to focus on playing guitar and remember lyrics. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And then like five seconds later, you realize what I realized he what he said. I was like, oh, well played. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll get back to you in a second, but well played. <laughs> it, for now. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Your kids will catch you off guard. Right, and, oh, yeah. They'll be like, oh, he's distracted. They could probably get away. Oh, with yeah. This. And he did. He did. He got me good. I have, I have to admit that. So uh, we're going to play this song. Cool. Um, this is Put Your Shoes On. Uh, you brought it to your band and said, hey. Yeah, and they, 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 yeah, they were like, yeah, let's do it. We, a couple weeks later, we, had, we got together on a Monday night and got the whole thing done. With that said, this yeah. is uh, a pre-showing of Put Your Shoes On. September 16th. September 16th, all streaming platforms. Correct. By Rascal Revival.
put your shoes on. Have you ever, <clears throat> have you ever, excuse me. <clears throat> have you ever thought, there we go, about uh, doing maybe like a family band? I've, I've had other people bring that up many times because we have, we have videos we've sent to like just families, family members and friends of, of the kids. Like any, any time it's, it's somebody's birthday, they get out the ukulele and violin and we write on our little whiteboard, like happy birthday, whoever's birthday it is, and they sing happy birthday and, and jam along. And we actually, one of their first, one of the band's first bands that we discovered together as a, as a family was Watson Family Hour, which is a brother and sister. Um, after we discovered Nickel Creek, because um, they're both in Nickel Creek. And that's actually uh, Sarah Watkins, who plays violin in, in Nickel Creek and Watson Family Hour and a number of other and, um, bands, uh, is, was actually who inspired my oldest daughter to pick up a violin and oh, wow. pretend play one for long enough that we, we got her one. <laughs> like, all right, well, let's just get to the real thing, because she's playing with this toy that's not a violin and right, of it's course. great for her imagination, but we'd love to get a, get the real thing in her hands. And so have you ever thought about bringing, uh, bringing that, uh, bring turning it into a project? We'll see. It's, I'm going to leave it up to them. I don't want to give right. them too much pressure, but I think they, they have the spirit right now. They have the spirit. If, if they, once they're old enough that, that they the, can actually, they can know. actually, yeah. Re- remember entire songs and, and, and have hands big enough to play the instruments and stuff. They're, they're on their way already. They got the they got the spirit. Great. Yeah. So starting uh, talking about uh, starting a project. Yeah. How does one uh, create a band project? What are some of the things you have to think about? What are some of the uh, some of the hurdles, obstacles you have to uh, come over? So initially, I started the band because my wife was pregnant, and I realized during that pregnancy, if I don't start a band before this baby's born, it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So that kind of cut the legs off of my initial dream of having a larger band. But I realized in hindsight it helped it at the same mm-hmm. time. So I started a, a folk trio. Um, it was just acoustic guitar, violin, and percussion, like cajon and like r- random cymbals. He had a really cool setup. I forget what exactly he did. He had a snare, but um, his cajon was his bass. He had a pedal. That hooked. It, was, it was a pretty cool setup, but um, we worked like that for a while, and then... Our percussionist left after, I guess, maybe a year or two uh, to be a sound guy at HMAC in Harrisburg, which every Friday, Saturday night, he's booked, basically. Booked, right, yeah. <laughs> um, we actually did a gig with him there as, as a sound guy. He was our last gig with him. It was outrageous. He did such an incredible job. He ran sound for us and, and, ups- and upstairs, oh, no. came downstairs, played our, our show, and then ran back upstairs and finished. It was great. I don't know how he did it, but it, it went... Seemingly well from my my perspective, um, but after he left, it took us a while, a little while to find a new drummer. Um, but he brought along with him Jake Joyce on lead guitar because they play together in a band called The. Uh, Jake plays bass, and then um, that was the six pieces after. So I, I kind of jumped over the part where saxophone joined in. Um, Eric just joined us on stage once. Um, at HMAC as he a, few, does. As, yeah, a few years ago and uh, he's basically been a staple ever since um, I asked him that night if he just wanted to make it I mean I don't ask a lot of them um, I, I understand that they're great musicians and have crazy book schedules I don't think that we need to practice every week I think that they're good enough that we can get together and I think that's what's great, made this this jam band so so great in my opinion is that that we can come together and everyone can just be right on the same page so quickly We've played a lot of these songs well enough, and now we're writing songs and bouncing ideas off of each other enough that just by writing the song together, we're learning it and getting it done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's there's not as much growing pains with that either. And I'm sure they're disciplined musicians who practice oh, at home. They yeah, very yeah. much they very much are, and they they're tr- tremendous tremendous. Each and every one of them, I tell oh, absolutely. I, every solo show I have, anyone that comes up to to, to me and tells me they enjoyed me, I'm, I Say, come see the band because I'm the worst person in the band. <laughs> All I did was sing the song. <laughs> right. These guys are, make it so much better. And, and just to have the energy is, um, for me, is what made me realize that how, how patient I was in hindsight and getting the right pieces because I did try to bring other people in here and there. And chemistry is very important. Yes. Don't just ha- like. Don't just find a basis. Find the right basis for you. Take the time and realize if, if it's if it's something you want to do, then do it right. Mm-hmm. And and 
and it's not to offend anyone who who isn't uh, not the right bassist or not the right lead guitarist or whatever it might be or a drummer. It, it's not. It's a, it's more about chemistry than than, than their skill set per se. Because I wouldn't want to bring in like a, a metal drummer for our our, our band. Set, you, know, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, and we have what's really cool is they. I feel like I more than allow all of my guys. I give them time to shine because um, I realize it's not about me, and I've I've. I've explained that to them, and I've. The longer we play together, the more I feel like they are appreciative of that, um, I, or maybe I'm just realizing it more. But well, yeah, because oftentimes though they're, they're uh, accessory instruments, right? Right. right. Uh, they don't get the the limelight. It's more of a, it's like, oh, I'm the main act, and they're accessories, right? Um, and and it's so hard for me to to go to practice and be like, wow, these guys are so much better than me, and like, and to, to try tell them what to do, <laughs> right? <You know>? Right. <laughs> um. But even even it's also like well I don't even have to most of the time you don't have to right, tell no, them what because they, they, they already know what to right, do right exactly they have a, an understanding of what this project is and what we're doing and and what's really cool is I, I feel like I've never had to to verbalize exactly what this project is mm. um, we've kind of just come together and let the music do it like so we we have we have a song that we released a video of last year we don't have any, any we don't have any, any like streaming platforms but it's called um, fading. And I brought it to the band, and we played it a, f- a, f- a bunch of times through, and then we were all kind of just looking at each other, and like, there's something a little off here. And we just worked together, and we fixed it. And, then, and I feel like just that process made that two-hour process, m- even though we came out with just one, one fine-tuned song, made us that much better for our upcoming gig that we were practicing for. We really pr- practiced one song, and like, we were supposed to go through our set. Mm-hmm. And we practiced that one new song the entire time. But we got back to the set list the next practice, and it was, I feel like it was better than had we ran through that same set list the first practice. Yeah, that, that, that's something important. If if there is a weird sound or if there's a, a, a weird thing going on, right. you got to fix that sound right. because everyone knows it's weird. Right, exactly. And 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 no one, no one's above speaking up and no one's above taking suggestions, yeah. which is great. Like I've I've seen other bands crash and burn just because one person can't take a suggestion instead of it. Um, so like I'm 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 incredibly blessed in that aspect that I've been um, able to bring together a group of musicians that just understand it. Yeah, the, it, if you want to start a band, if you want to be a part of a band, if you want it, the, honestly, this goes for most things in life. You have to be open to suggestions. Absolutely, yeah. And you have to be open to critique. Oh yeah, constructive criticism, mind you. Yeah, uh, right. not not anything just. You don't need it thrown in your face. But. Right, right. Not, not uh, if if someone's like, giving you straight up hate. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. But uh, and that's the thing. Great point. I'm not. I've never understood the people that are like, let your haters be your motivators. No, like let your internal drive to and passion to make. This music, or make whatever it is, or do make you do whatever you do, make that be your motivator. And like, to hate, like yeah, like you said, it, throw the hate away. Yeah, don't worry the, about it because like, that person was never gonna listen to no, you anyway. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, and you're not trying to impress people that hate you. Right. It's not. That's not the goal. If right. if that's turned into your goal, uh, you've lost the plot a little bit. Exactly. And so, th- be open to suggestion. Absolutely. That's gonna make you a better player. It's yeah. gonna make you a better person. Oh yeah. It's gonna make you a, a much more rounded person as well. Right. Uh, I've received suggestions about uh, my playing style because yeah, I got to learn how to do scales. And we talked about this last right, time. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. some people look at me the solo. Right. Uh, since the last time, now I can do it. I'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Good. Uh, good. And and people enjoy it. Right. And I'll I'll take that opportunity. I won't say no. I'll do. I'll give it my best shot. Right, and people really enjoy, it, even though I I'll, I know I'll mess up, but that doesn't right. that's not the point. Right, no, it's not. The point is to do it exactly, and and to mess up so right. that way you get it better. Oh yeah, because once you mess up, it's <laughs> this might be there's a healthy way to do this and and an unhealthy way to do this, but it's gonna stick in your mind. Oh, I messed up. I got to practice. I got to oh, yeah. get better at it. Yeah. Um, one of my more favorite stories uh, recently of that happening, uh. Is I went down uh, to Silver Springs to talk to Daryl Davis. Uh, do you know who that is at all? No. 
you should look up that episode. Okay. It's a great one. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, he's the piano player of he was the piano player of Chuck Berry. He's played with oh, Bruce nice. Springsteen. I, 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 I remember seeing the advertisement for it at least. Yeah. I, I didn't get to catch the episode, but yeah. Um, but uh, so I had to take my my setup down down there. Yeah. And I had never done. Even this is one of my plans. I want to have a mobile rig. Right. I had I had never actually done it before. Right. And in the music industry, you kind of just say yes and figure it out later. Right. Right. That's how I got my first gig. That's. I mean, and that's another. If you if you want to take another uh, point away from this, say yes. Uh, figure it out later. Right. Um, especially if you if you know that you're capable of doing. Yeah. It. Put in the time and get it done. Yeah. yeah. Just just say yes. Don't don't be like, well, I have to do this for say yes because that opportunity will likely not come up again. Right. Um but uh so I, I did all that. I was I prepped the night before because this is one of the biggest artists I am I he's been right. a, a childhood inspiration for me too, because another part of his uh work is that he's a uh a race col- con- uh, not colonizer. A race uh, re- reconciliator. Uh, he 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 befriends KKK members and de-radicalizes them out of the KKK. Okay. Um. And so I, I've 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 been with the I've uh, known about this guy for years, and he's been a gigantic inspiration for me. Not only as a as a blues player. Yeah. Uh. And like a you know he was a part of the Money Waters National Band or Legendary Band whatever. Yeah. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. So a, a gigantic inspiration, but uh, I'm just. And all, all of this person. So I'm right. like making sure I have everything. Oh yeah. And what do I forget? The power cord to my Mac <laughs> Mini. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. And uh, thank God, uh, Daryl is a gracious man, and he let me uh, use some of his equipment. Good. And uh, we, we, you know, the show happened. Right. Right. Yeah. But be darned if I'm ever gonna forget. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> that one cord ever again. I have I have two power cables to my PA system in my bag now. That's because I I I used to only carry one, and then one gig I just it wasn't there. So now I I keep two. I don't. I'm not going through that again. No you know? no uh, yeah. Uh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool mm-hmm. me twice. It absol- it's absolutely true. So these mistakes, uh, gigantic but small mistakes. Right. Oh yeah. Right? Uh, just forgetting a cord or forgetting. And I even you know what's funny? I don't. I I was like. 10 minutes away from my house and I had this gut feeling that I was missing something right. and I, I got out and checked right. and I missed the fact right. that I, I was missing the car. And so it was even that much more. It was like, okay, yeah, I got to make a checklist for myself now. <laughs> I, uh, what I should do is just get a whole different setup, but that requires a lot of money right. that I don't have right now. Um, but make your mistakes. Yeah. All that to be said, make that, make your mistakes, improve your self. Yeah. You can never be done improving. You should always be learning. Yeah. That is uh, a thing I've been learning recently. Yeah. Uh, there's YouTube. Yeah. Literally oh, yeah, yeah. You everything. can look up. Yeah, you can watch, listen to so many things. And there, and speaking about podcasts, there are so many podcasts oh, yeah. out there that are... It's dedicated. overwhelming almost. It's it, truly. Yeah. Uh, it's oversaturated for right. quite being honest. But um, there are so many great resources out there uh, for free. Yeah, absolutely. And because, you know, people advertise Skillshare or, you know, college or whatever, you could do a lot of this, the stuff that me and RJ are doing yeah. without an education. This is, I, I have a degree in something completely different. Right. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And I'm, not, I'm not using it, but... <laughs> no, but but it's it's not necessary. This is, I mean, this is... This is, this is, this is the top... My, like, I'm, I'm very lucky enough that I... I realize if I want if I want to enjoy what I'm doing, I need to take action to, to make sure that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, because it's very easy to get sucked into the the monotony of just working to to pay off your bills and working and, your nine to five yeah, every and, day, and not doing anything and, else besides that. And don't get me wrong, I I'm in in a very lucky yes um, situation with my my family life and my wife and and everything that goes along with that, but um. And if you want to hear more, you have to you just take action. Is you you're resp- you you are responsible for yourself yes. to take action, and there's no one else. Absolutely, that is it. That's what realizing that things aren't going to happen to you. Right, right. Even long before I I started playing music, I told myself I want to do that, and I was just tired of telling myself I want to do that. I don't tell myself that anymore. <laughs> is I'm going. To I, do I that. just do that. Yeah, yeah, I just do it. I'm doing, and I'm, it's it's 
I, you got to be patient. I mean, I've been doing it for um, a good number of years now. I'm not even sure. I don't feel like doing the math right now, but it just made, makes me think of, uh, I forget who had the, who, the quote, but the quote is something along the lines of, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Yes. And I, I'm, I'm almost to the 10-year mark, I think, with, with music and just taking, with just taking it seriously. And, 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 and I, I only recently, I feel like, turned a corner as a vocalist. I, I, was, mm. I was never even that confident in my, in my vocal ability. And I, I'm, I'm much more confident now. And I feel like just practicing and just singing things that I, I have no business singing at home. Like, no one's around. Just right. sing, sing s- stuff w- above your, your high register and, like... Do stuff that's going to make you feel right, gross. Right, exactly, because that's how you grow. That's You're not how gonna, you grow. Like, I have, I have plenty of songs that I can play as, like, comfort songs. Like, if I feel like a gig's not going great, Just I know I can... Go back, go back cover. And, yeah, yep. and, 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 and that song will put me in the right spot. But, um... But yeah. That's a, that's another thing. Know yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, find if if you're a gigging musician, find those songs that a you like. Right. B everyone else somewhat knows or, or right. likes. Yeah. Right. And uh, learn the crap out of that song. Oh yeah. Uh, to the point of where oh, and here's Wonderwall. You know, right. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to the point of that. Uh, yeah. That kind of annoyance. Yeah. Um, and. Have that in your back pocket. Don't don't let that be part of. And I should say this too. Don't let it be part of your normal set because there are so many wrong things that can happen on oh, a yeah. set. There there's the people that are there that might come up and say blah 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 blah, blah whatever. The, the the venue itself could be yeah. not the best experience. Yeah. They uh and it, so many things can happen. And if you are have already wasted that song without the proper mindset behind right. it. Right. Oh yeah. What what song are you gonna do? You're gonna have to look up a new song that y- you found this part. Right. But with that, with that, uh, the undercover set list, we'll call it in in the in the background, right? Yeah. Of, of two or three songs that you know will yeah. get you will refocus your mind yeah. and all that jazz. Uh, save those songs for those moments. Oh yeah. Because they will happen. Oh yeah. And it took me a while. There was times where I would start off set lists with those songs because I kn- I knew. Mm-hmm. This can get me going, but the, the same thing later on in the set list, I'm like scrambling, like, where's my comfort songs at? And I, I, you can't gone. play them anymore. Yeah, right. You can't you, play them they've again. already been spent. Yeah. And so that it's it, create for yourself a, a list, I would say, of like five songs. Five yeah. is a good number. Yeah, five is a solid number. Um, and granted, you can, uh, it's a great way to start a set too, is by yeah. starting, starting yeah. off. If you have really a nice strong. list, if you have a nice list of them, you can. Then you can do one to start with, yeah, yeah. And then like, just, just save them in the bank. For me, they're they're Tom Petty songs. <laughs> there's there's no, yeah. They, all of those all of his songs are easy. They're all recognizable, and I don't know anyone who doesn't like Tom Petty. I don't know anyone who has a Tom Petty tattoo either. But, <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's, but I don't know anyone who hears Tom Petty and is like, no, turn that off. You know, like right, yeah. Um, for the most part, people can get get into that. So, for at, as in when I perform solo with just an acoustic guitar, that's a I think part of that points back to his philosophy. I'm not sure if you've seen the, the documentary Sound City, but he I talks so. he talks in that about um, he's al- he's always had a philosophy that songs should be recognizable with just one instrument and vocals. Mm. So if you go back and you look at his songs, even the simplest chord progressions have something just a little off about. It's not just four chords; it's it's three chords with one of the th- chords played twice, or it's it's just something subtle. That makes it recognizable unique, yeah. and it makes it unique, and it's, and like once, I heard him say that, and then I I had, I was able to look at his songs through that scope. I was, I was amazed. Amazed. Yeah. I was like, he's absolutely right. Every one of these songs is so simple, but also just just tweaks enough that it can be it's recognizable. Yeah, and and honestly, that's a good uh, starting place for a songwriter. Is oh, yeah. to. Uh, if your song doesn't have a, uh, an intro, make one. Right. It's uh, first off, it's your song. Yeah. Uh, right. So, exactly. Yeah. Second off, uh, that's gonna give uh, so much credence to uh, when you play it live. Yeah. Right. There, people, uh, especially if they're your fans, they're gonna recognize that tune and and, and get really excited. Yeah. Before you even start singing it, because it, it, having an intro, I, I think p- this is this is a lost art of like the seventies and eighties. <laughs> 
uh, where we have all those great piano intros, all those great yeah, guitar intros yeah. that one like the first two notes. Sometimes even the first oh, yeah. note, you know mm-hmm. what song that is. Oh yeah, and you are excited, and you get you 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 stand up, or yeah. you immediately uh, stop your conversation, and uh, like just just like that, it yeah, happens. Big one for me is "Under the Bridge" by Red Hot Chili uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, one of my I love that intro, man. You just I love uh, Elton John is one of my yeah. biggest inspirations. I was, I was gonna Same. I was gonna bring up Elton John or Billy Joel because they. Both have big piano intros. Yeah, it was like, it's like uh, once you hear once you hear the harmonica of piano, right? you oh, already yeah. know. Oh yeah, yeah. It's even uh, just when you hear the first note of that harmonica, yeah. you already know what's gonna happen. If you, the the first uh, piano uh, intro to your song by Elton John, yeah, uh, you already know. Yeah, what's what's happening? Yeah, uh, and the the first the first hits to uh, oh, what's it called? Dude, I'm still standing. Yeah, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, you you already know what's happening. Yeah, there's low there's low notes on that song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, f- for yourself, for your songs, create an intro. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be on your EP, but like I said, if you want something to be recognizable, right, and you want people to hold on to something and and uh, get a sense of who you are before yeah. you start even singing, right. Put in a little ditty in yeah. the intro. Yeah. Work on that. Oh make, yeah. Make it solid. You're gonna pull in so many people like yeah. that. It's gonna. It's and especially when you uh, start out with an intro, it draws people in to begin with. Yeah. If you just start singing, people, it's it's gonna be like radio to them. Absolutely. And every song, every set list that we have as a band, like we play our first set or our first song, is one of our songs that has a nice intro to it. I I, I and it's funny because I didn't realize it till. Till now, as we're talking about this, I'm like going through the list of songs that we've played to start, and and I, it, that must be wh- why we go there. I've I, just subconsciously like, oh, this would be a great opener, and that's why. It's why because it, yeah. it's like okay, the music is starting. Right. We're not it, slapping you in the face with it. Right. Yeah. It builds up, whatever, whatever it might be. Um, we have one that's it's the whole thing's quiet. Um, on our song for the world, it's it's just light acoustic guitar, and then it just strums and fades out and then boom the drums come in um i like doing stuff like that stuff oh like that's that a lot. so much fun yeah. I, like uh contrast and songs yeah. it's so much fun. even it, like in in put your shoes on um yeah the, the, my kids love the fact they, they they call it uh what do they call it uh pretending the song's over i think is what they call mm. it because they i stopped so and they they love that so like, when i brought that concept into the song they were just like Nora and Gibson, who was, I had worked with that progression before we wrote the song, and like that. Um, but any, but anyway, they they like that to stop. I call and come it, back in. I I call it the feeling good. Yeah. Because it, Michael Bublé, the feeling good, does it perfectly. Okay. Uh, it gets it's. Have you ever heard of that song? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it starts out with the with the strings. Yeah. As birds in the sky. Yeah. You know how I feel. feel. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I'm feeling. Good, pound mm. jump, yeah. bam, bam. It, oh, it yeah. gets full on it. Oh, it yeah. goes full force, and, yeah. and, and every uh, nerve in your body goes. Ooh. Yeah, and especially when you like, there's nothing like you can listen to that in headphones or in your car or whatever, but and that's cool. But like, when you're when there, there when, and you're there, there's you nothing like that. Feel the vibration yeah. of the bass and uh, all the uh, like the low instruments, and you can just you can see the people having a whale of a time. Right, and that's. That's what I want as a as like the leader of a band. I want to be to connect with people that way. Like I don't as much as it's important and necessary to release songs. I'm not. I don't want to sit there and fine tune every aspect of it before we release it. Spend a year on one song. We bang, um, put your shoes on out in one night. I I told the guys just like every when I told them, like I told them last year when we recorded our EP. Like get two takes. Three, if you think you need it. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you don't like something, let me know. We won't use it. But like, I don't. I don't need perfection out of you. I want this. Is, this is. I want this to represent what we sound like live. And mm-hmm. I'm. And between us being a jam band and and the fact that you can spend so much time and money and energy fine tuning things that just flat out don't, don't need, matter. Yeah, don't need fine tuned. People won't it just, realize. It, it just yeah right. I just felt like it's the best representation of us to give something like that. 
Yeah, and th- that's another uh, another great pointer for uh, musicians who want to or who are focused on releasing music. Right. Too. Yeah. Don't worry about the quality as much. If yeah. It, uh, granted, you do want quality. Like, be confident, what, be in, confident what you, yes. in what you're releasing. Be but, proud of what you're releasing right. for sure. But don't don't overbear yourself in the oh this hi hat sound this right. is DQ'd the right the way or this this if it was just this whatever. Um, granted, if you if you make a mistake, yeah, it's the mistake, yeah. But um, but the tiny stuff like that where yeah. you can turn a knob a tiny bit away right. and like all of that small stuff. Analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis. Paralysis. That's what I call it. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's I. Uh, oh my gosh, I I've been working. You can on, sit there for uh, hours and like tweak all these things and leave listen to it again and it barely sounds different. I've been working on a song called You Remain. I wrote that in 2020. Yeah. Still haven't released it yet. Yeah. Because I am one of the... Uh, granted, I, I, I can't sing anyway, so I'm like always conscious of my voice. Yeah. Uh, I've been there. I still am sometimes. Right, yeah. But no, just release it. People... Because I, I, started, I started listening to a lot of the old guard musicians, like 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 Muddy Waters, like, right. it's like old, old stuff. And I was surprised by the... the, the qual- Not to say that they weren't quality... But you can hear the background static. Right, you right. can hear the yeah. tiny little mistakes that uh, on one of the Muddy Waters' more famous songs, uh, I think it's Hoochie Coochie Man. Um, the, in the beginning, the harmonica it sounds like a mistake. Probably it's probably not. Right. But it acts so much. It adds right. so much character. Right. Yeah. It, it, it gives it gives you like okay, this is uh, nitty gritty. I can actually feel like I'm there. Right. It exactly. Fe- it doesn't feel like a uh, a stage performance. Right. Uh, quote unquote, like like maybe a classical piece is, right? But it feels like, oh, this is this is real, this is raw. Exactly, I understand what's going on here. Yeah, and I I connect with with that more than I feel like I connect with. Yeah, with just music that's been too overproduced, um, and you don't see anyone out like busking with their. With their studio setup, yeah, right? like, you know what I mean, like <laughs> you got their guitar. Just, yeah, that, that's the most raw thing and the most human aspects to, to music is playing it with your hands and feeling it with your body and and uh, I don't know, just maybe I'm old school, maybe I'm old. I don't no, know, but no, you, you're but right. I, I think I feel like I when I heard Tom Petty with that quote in uh, Sound okay. City, I. It just blew my mind. It's, it, it really can make, it can be that simple, and and connecting to people and connecting people to other people through music is that simple. Yeah, it's so. Moving on from the side because we can yeah. talk about this all day. Right. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the things you've had to think about uh, as as a band? What are what are some of the things you have to traverse? There are an infinitesimal things. How do you get uh, uh, your copyright ha- figured out? How do you get uh, all that stuff figured? out? How do you own your music? How do you gain uh, royalty and stuff like that? Yeah, um, I'm still new to a lot of that as a, as a as a band leader. Um, but having said that, I, I I am in a lucky enough situation that I I gig enough solo, excuse me, and I'm in a, a lucky enough financial situation at home that if I have a, a big gig coming up or a a risky gig, we were talking about, about like risky mm-hmm. gigs earlier uh, before the show. Um, if I I'm not afraid to, and I'm, and it's because I'm able to. I'm I'm lucky enough that I'm able to, but I'm not afraid to take a check from. A solo gig and and make sure that my guys get paid correctly because they are professional musicians. They are great musicians. They're and, worth and it. I don't. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't want them even for a second to think that I'm taking advantage of them in any way, shape, or form. Um, I tell people all the time, I'm the worst person in the band. These <laughs> these guys are so good, um, and they understand what what the project is too, which is great. I don't. We don't have to talk about it. Yeah, that, that, that's that's another thing. Uh, you we mentioned chemistry before. Yeah. Uh, the uh, make sure you know your guys. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. There's there's been a couple instances of just great musicians, but just they didn't mesh well with other people in the band or or um, just style. Uh, yeah, stylistically, uh, like yeah. Wh- where you, what your influences are yep. might just not mesh well with the other five influences in the band. Which is it's it's hard to ask for for someone to come in and not 
step on toes and not have too much of their bring in too much of an, oh, some sort of any out, influence out, yeah. outrageous influence that might not mesh well with but what's what's so great is that these guys are just have a general understanding of what music is and what it should be and and, I, and I, they've told me that they like the fact that it's an original band they like that we're a jam band they don't need to necessarily like they know the songs and they know what they're going to play but they can we improvise. can they can decide in the in the moment and improvise like um we had to we we had we opened for Keller Williams back in March and we had to we got an email that morning saying that we had an extra fifteen minutes, which was great, but we didn't rehearse for that much time, so we we added two songs, one of which we played and rehearsed for sound check, and one we just didn't rehearse. But that was probably our best song of the night, the one that we didn't rehearse, because everyone knew that we didn't rehearse it, and like we were listening to each other and just letting the Watching. music letting the music just take us where it needed to. That's, and, that's also another reason that I have comfort songs in your back pocket right, as well. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, for sure. That's something I, I've been learning a lot, especially if, you, if you're a musician that has, like, quote unquote, an accessory instrument. Right. Uh, go out to open mics, yeah, jam with everybody. Right. Uh, Eric, our saxophone player, plays in a ton of other bands because that's what he does. He that's just goes he out. Like, that's how um, I, I think I met him through our original drummer, but he didn't even practice with us his first gig. He just came out and just jammed with us. And Yeah, and that's. Those, and then, that's what makes great music. Even if you right. uh, have like an essential instrument, uh, a quote unquote essential instrument, right. like drums or or uh, bass or guitar, play with anybody that'll let you. Yeah, literally. I've I've progressed more as a musician in the past five years that I've had this band than the first five years that I was playing music. Yeah, because it's only you. Right. It, you only have a certain amount of creativity. Exactly. Yeah, and. Recognize you're human and, and recognize that if you're, you're not if, infinite. If, if you've hit a plateau, like find find a, a way to to whether it's meeting someone who plays another instrument or plays your instrument and can teach you things, or just get on YouTube and find something that's inspirational, or or just find a new scale. Or oh my gosh, I can't tell you how useful it is to find figure out new styles in general. Yeah. And th- that doesn't mean if you hate country, fair enough. Figure out how to play country. Yeah. Understand it. You don't Understand even necessarily. It. You don't even necessarily have to have it in your back pocket. No. But if you know, like, oh, this is what they do to get that sound. It's so much. Right. It's there's so much use. Like I, I as a piano player, I look up licks all the time right. because I can use them in ways that I don't. Because it's 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 not about the licks themselves. And this is something I've learned a lot. It is the context right. in which you use the lick. The yeah. lick. You can know a lick inside and out. Yeah. However, if you don't understand the purpose of it, right. if you don't understand why it, why that was put in there, if you don't understand um, the the chord progression behind it, right, it, it means nothing yeah. because you can't apply it. Yeah. If 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 you want to learn how to do licks, do cool stuff like that. Yeah. Learn your scales. Yeah. Know them by heart. Know what sounds good together. No, and and this goes back to style too. If you're playing blues, you're gonna want to add in those flat sevens a lot, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, trill around, play around with those, uh, and makes that because that's that's the style. You don't know that unless you have experienced it. You you know, research a little bit. Yeah. Granted, it takes time. Yeah. But now you can add that little bit of twang. Yeah. In any song ever. And, right. and it's going to turn heads. It's going to elevate your music. Exactly. Ha- having, pulling that stuff out of your back pocket, committing it to muscle memory. Right. It's another thing. Uh, practicing it in different scales. Yeah. It, it's so- stuff that's going to bring your music to the next level because people are going to hear that and be like, ooh, I like that one. Yeah. I play rhythm, so I don't have to, like, right. I feel like I don't have to have the scales quite as nailed down. But as, as a musician who wants to keep growing, I try to make sure I. I, I learn some new things when I can, but, but, but. I, I I do a lot of things based off of of sound and like okay I'm trying what am I trying to do here I'll just like noodle around with, with something like oh I like this it sticks and then I'll bring it to my kids and be like is this good because <laughs> they're honest <laughs> that's another thing seek feedback yeah oh yeah your ear is your ear alone and you are biased and sometimes that <laughs> feedback doesn't even have to be verbal like if you it could just be. Like, like I said, I'm lucky enough to be home with my kids a lot. I can just be playing something, and they're walking down the hallway, and then just, just jamming out. Yeah, I'm like, okay, this is good then. If this is making them move, then it'll make somebody else. Yeah, move. it makes somebody else move exactly. Uh, and uh, people are, I think, too in their heads. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, for sure. With their for own sure. music. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'm guilty of it. That's how I know. Oh, everyone's <laughs> everyone's guilty yeah. of it. Because uh, I know this for a fact. Uh, what what I'll do is I'll, I have uh, my core group of friends that I know that if I, I can send anything to, and I just, I just, I just send them a link that said thoughts, and they'll get around to it whenever they get around right. to it. Uh, and that's awesome. And that's awesome. And yeah. that and that's uh, that's another thing. Patience is key. Just oh, because yeah. someone doesn't respond immediately doesn't right. mean they hate it, right. or if they've seen it, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean that they read it or clicked the link or yeah. Yeah. Um. And you know, just if you if you have that core group of friends, you you can trust them. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh. So I'll I'll give it to them. I'll see what they what they think. What they what they you know whatever. And then I'll uh, take it back and do whatever adjustments I need. That's Something I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Uh, w- one more thing with the with the um, starting a band and collecting a band, a group of people for a band and growing a band. Um, real quick before I do forget, I might have already. Hold on. <laughs> um, oh, being patient with the trust in them too. Like I I didn't when I first started the band. I was like, okay, this is I got when I first got all six pieces together. Like this is a lot. This is made me nervous. Like I mm-hmm. gotta make sure. All these guys are doing the right thing, but like now I just don't have to worry about that. Like, that's going to be there at first, no matter who you're with. Yes. But once you find that chemistry, it's gonna fade real quick. Yeah, that's that's one thing. Uh, another thing, when you know right. it's okay, right? It, when you can, this is something. Uh, me and my friend Cody Kilburn, uh, mm-hmm. we do all the time. I I uh, I trust him. He trusts me. Yeah. Granted. We don't have the luxury of, of practice a lot. A lot of right. times when we're out gigging, this yeah. is the first time I've played this song with him. Yeah. Uh, but and here's another thing. Know your talent. Yeah. Know the extent right. of your talent. Know where it stops. Know where it stops and know when to stop mm-hmm. by yourself. When when he was uh there was a time where he played uh Don McLean, American Pie. Mm -hmm. I know that song is hard. (laughs) I know there's a lot lot of chord changes. A lot. And he was like, play the piano. I'm like, no. Right. This is not going to be good. Right. And granted, if if it's just something like, oh, we're playing at an open mic. Yeah. Do it anyway. Right. Uh, But if if it's like a paid gig or something like that, stay, if you, especially if you're just uh, walking in, sitting in. Yeah. Right. Be sure to know your limits. Yeah. Don't try to oversell yourself. If if the setting is right, for, there were some songs I could I figured out very easily on the fly with them. Yeah. And uh, there, at a certain point in the night, people are, are drunk enough. Oh yeah. Don't care. Right. Um. Uh. But at, at, at like a professional space, where um, know your limits. Yeah. Know when to step back. Know when to go in the rhythm. Right. As, right. A, as a rhythm section. Yeah. Because uh, that's uh, know how to play. Oh, that's another thing. Know how to play rhythm. Yeah. Uh, because if you don't know how to solo, if you don't know how to add in those little licks, start with the rhythm. Right. Exactly. That's where you're gonna learn the most. That's where if you don't know rhythm, you can't play licks. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. What are some? You're a Christian. Yeah. Let's go. Let's move move on yeah. to our, our our last topic of today. Uh, you are a Christian. How does how do you how does your faith impact your work? How does your faith impact the way you play, where you play? If that if that's a if that's a consideration. Um. Good question. I'm not sure it has influenced my songwriting more than anything else per se. I I when I with the exception of put your shoes on, I marinate in my lyrics and i try to make sure that i like them and make sure that you can't look at it from a different angle and it's not going to make sense um so i've i I try not to say things that are very clearly and obviously christian per se because i don't want i know that that type of music can turn people away and yes and if i'm going to say stuff like that it's going to be subliminally um i have a song that's called called you saved me uh, we actually have a live version of it on streaming platforms and whatnot. Um, and I, when I wrote it, it was not about God, but I've had enough people ask me at this point that like, it's almost con- convinced me that it could be like, it's kind of just like a, about, a, I say this endearingly, but like a jerk group of friends of mine. We 
under, like we're brothers. Mm-hmm. I grew up with brothers. We can rag on each other. And no one gets offended. Um, we have a really good time when we get together. I'm actually getting to get, getting laid together with them later today. Um, so I'll say, if you don't have that group of friends, yeah, you should find right. them. Right. Yeah, right. And like just the kind of people you can just be yourself in front of and um, not take yourself I, I met them. I met them at the, uh, uh, the right time in my life that like it, if I, I feel like if I didn't ha- find those people that I could be myself around, I, I, I might not have found the right people to, you know what I mean? Like I might not have found anyone to be, to be myself around and like, right. who knows what could have happened then. Um, but because that was, I guess, two years removed from like a really bad concussion I had, mm. I've had and, I, and I've had a, I've had a bunch, but they kind of they I sometimes I would mention that to people and they would just be like, okay, whatever, you're weird. Um, but like they were like, oh yeah, okay, like they played sports too, so they 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 got it, they understood that like some of the effects that that can have on you and, um, but, but that's the beauty about of music if you if you. You no matter what you write about, once you give it to someone else, it's it's whatever they interpret it to be. Yeah, it's it's, that's, a, it's a there's communal. not there's not too many things that that are that have that kind of transformation in just an exchange of hands. Yeah, um, and I think that's what what makes music so beautiful and and so immortal. Right, exactly. And I think um, when it comes to like faith in music, I think we almost sometimes forget fact that like all of this is has been created and, and like we've been able to understand and manipulate wood enough and metal enough that we can make we can make things make can make things yeah. like um there's as much of the, the music is meant to bring people together and i think that in itself is almost supernatural in a way yeah it is um, very much so and i i, I think that Especially today, we we've lost the beauty in that. Just because at the click of a button, you can find and find something, and then ten seconds in, you decide you don't like it because you're so used to having instant gratification. And yeah, we were talking about intros earlier, and I think part of the reason that intros have kind of gone by the wayside is it's because of that. It's because of that is people want to hear the chorus. If you if you don't get to the chorus in under a minute, What's the hook people yeah, people are going to turn it off, um, and. I'm, at, at this point, I'm confident enough to say that we're a live band. You want to come see us live. I don't care if you want to, if we get point zero 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 eight cents off of your Spotify play. And right, I, exactly. And, and, and to be honest, I don't care if you spend the $8 or $12 to come see us live. I just want you to be there. I don't really care about, I mean, I'm sh- sure, I'm, I'm sure $8 is way better than $35 or whatever it was when we had to play, when we opened for Keller Williams, but... Um, but yeah, like music is meant to bring people together and to have to bri- to bridge gaps, bridge gaps, and to to you could have nothing else in common with the person you're standing right next to, but for that two hours, you're their best friend. Yeah, right. You're you know? you're a brother. Right. at that point. Yeah. Uh, there are it's, and I I think I think rather than saying specific things in music, I'm trying to use the supernatural aspect of music in the best way that I can and that's with the help of five other people Mm -hmm. um to bring people together and because I think ultimately that's more powerful than anything I could say yeah makes sense no as a musician you are uh there are I would say there's three things you have to do you have to create an atmosphere right and that 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 begins with your instrumentation your arranging all that jazz you have to uh Set the energy level, which is kind of the same thing, um, but distinctly so. You have to put in the energy that you want out of it. Right. Absolutely. And that, and uh, third, you are a leader. Yeah. You have to make sure that you are leading every everything. You you are uh, not that you're in total control. Correct. Very very big difference. Very big difference. Not very a dictatorship. Big, not a dictatorship. Yeah. You are a, a shepherd. Right. Leading this, uh, in, keep it religious. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, to uh, you're you're the shepherd leading your sheep. You're you're, uh, and this it's not like a derogatory. Right. Like, it, sometimes it can be, but uh, they're not sheeple. No, they're not sheeple. <laughs> but it, you're le- you're leading your audience to a a better place. Right. And that's what the, if you nail those three things, 
every audience that you are going to come in contact with will be encaptured. Absolutely. And, and, and what's the hard part is marketing and getting people to come out at this point. That is the <laughs> hardest part. <laughs> but um, I, I, I do feel like with the right um, recipe and from the right perspective and point of view that um, whatever your definition of success is, you can find it. Um, that, that's another. Right. Know your definition of success. Yeah. And, I, and I'm still not sure. I do know what my definition of success is yet, but I'm comfortable not knowing because the band is still in its infancy. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're a six-piece. I, I guess technically we've been together for a couple of years, but that's through COVID. Um, we, we tried to get our first EP released <laughs> like literally two weeks the, 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 when the initial two week period hit that, that was over <laughs> our March, yeah. that was over our recording per- period when we were supposed to be recording our first EP and it clearly didn't happen we did it a year later after a couple gigs we were lucky enough to be nominated for a CPMA award which is awesome um, I don't know if we, ha- we have enough gigs this year to, to qualify but maybe maybe the single could do it um, under, under that umbrella of I think they have a single of the year, song of the year instead of we 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 uh we got nominated for alternative rock last year, which was That's cool. interesting. Yeah, I hope they have a jam band category next. We'll see. Because mm. we were in there, we were in there with some really cool alternative rock bands. Like when you think of alternative rock, that was it's that. their sound, and not necessarily our more acoustic sound. Um, but but we deservedly lost. <laughs> And that's another thing right. to be okay with. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Be okay with losing. You're yeah. going to lose a lot. Yeah, way more than you can win. Way, way, yeah. way yeah. more yeah. than you can win. That's yeah. so true. Uh, in talking about uh, bands, longevity is the key to yeah. success. I've, I've found that. I think I've, I've realized being patient and playing the long game, not necessarily uh, – Overselling us too early per se, because I, I don't I don't want to have the name of Rascal Revival out there with with a with, with something I'm not confident. Proud of, yeah. proud, you know what I mean? So like, there was a period in time when we had first become Six Pieces that people were like, "What do you like? What do you sound like? Where can I hear this stuff?" And like, we don't have it yet because we just became this, and like, we're working it, on it. It was just hard to verbalize. Um. So now I feel like I'm to the point where. I am confident in all that, and I can I can articulate what we are now because it's more clear. Because at one point it was just we're six pieces. Now I can be like, what kind of jam band? And yeah. that's okay. Like I know there's people that get turned off by that term, mm-hmm. but I I I genuinely feel like I take an effort to and my guys do a very good job of just on their own keeping it tasteful. Um, we don't. There's a good way. To we do don't do it. We don't do 15 minute songs. Yeah. I mean, we can do. So, Maybe ten, if if at the most, maybe depending on what we're playing, but that that would only it wouldn't happen if we wouldn't plan it to be that long. It would just be like okay, the music's taking us there. Um, you would, would just sit, or if like we we kind of kind of collectively came back down, and then there was a bigger part in the song, we'd have to come back up and then back down again. It's gonna take some time. And that, that's another skill you should learn, right? Uh, playing uh, is something that everyone should learn. You can learn how to play the song as it was written. Yeah. But there's a difference between the studio recording. Yeah. And this is with all artists. Yeah. If you've ever been to a, a live concert. Oh, yeah. They never play the studio yeah. quali- or quality of rendition of right. their songs. It's always, I love listening to live yeah, albums. Yeah, it's so much better. So it, much they're better. so much better. Yes. I, uh, Queen. Oh, I've, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. The, 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 I was listening to uh, some, Somebody to Love. And uh, oh. he the the way he leads the crowd. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. He yeah. he's got everybody in that crowd singing. Can you imagine uh, what that must feel like to be. You will find me. Right to be Freddie Mercury in that Somebody situation. Do. Oh my goodness. And every, and all the audience goes. La! Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and yeah, and to do the these uh, and sitting in the music is okay. Right. Right. You don't have to get to your next set immediately. Yeah. Uh, People are there for an experience, yeah, and they're not there to listen to the radio. Correct. They're li- they're there to listen to you. Yeah, and I, and that's that's one thing that I feel like is hard kind of to do marketing because mm. I want so badly to not have to market per se. Like we are a live band. Like we're not. I don't want you to necessarily. I I do want you to listen to our stuff so that you come out and see yes. us live. 
not necessarily to get our plays up or to to have impressive Spotify, whatever that crap they call it is, where they give you a, a feedback. Analytics, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Like that's that's all well and good, but a you're not making anything off those. For, yeah, it, unless you're getting like an outrageous number of streams. Unless you're certified, right? Or, or, right, yeah. and like at this point we're right. not, and, and we recognize that. So honestly, the best thing that I feel like we can do is just invite people out to our shows instead of listen to our album or our EP or yeah. I mean I'm, don't get me wrong I'm going to push this new song pretty hard and I I'm, I feel like I have to especially with this gig at the Englewood coming up after after it because that's kind of like our celebration for that's September for releasing September 16th is the release of Put Your Shoes On and September 30th we'll be at the Englewood in Hershey it's it's something uh marketing yeah the best way to market if you're a, a musician is organically yeah word of mouth yeah that is the best way because uh it's been said on this podcast before if you even even when you are performing for one person that one person it, if they're one person they're just they're probably most likely going to be heavily engaged in your music right. and feeling right. it yeah the, it, and you can turn it's it's a hard feeling to perform for an empty it is room, it is but do it oh yeah give your heart and soul put yourself somewhere else put yourself yeah that audience member is gonna is if if you do put your heart and soul into yeah. it, they're gonna bring two people next time. Right, and then those two those three people will bring in uh two other people each. Right, exactly. It's gonna grow, it's grow, just, grow, yeah. grow. And it's not overnight. It's not overnight, and it, that, that's another thing. Like longevity is, yeah. is your success. Yeah, and it, and I feel like even when you hear bands that like blow up from a single, that song's probably been out for a couple years before it got big. You know what I mean? Like even 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 in today's world, there's songs that that have been released five or six years ago, and then they just resurface and hit the chart. Even like older than that, with, with like Stranger Things and whatnot. But oh yeah, right. Oh, I was even thinking about uh, Tiny Dancer. Yeah. When it first came out, it was a dud. Yeah. Right. Uh, and until uh, more recently, I think it was like in the thousands. That's when it started getting massive traction. Yeah, right. And so don't. Literally, don't worry if you don't worry about the numbers. That's no. some, that's another thing that musicians yeah. can get so in their head about. Don't worry about the numbers. Yeah, and I, I I admittedly don't do a very good job of like keeping up to date or like I guess trying to keep up with the uh, algorithms per se. I yeah, mean, I post stuff on on social yeah. media, but it's it's I don't, I genuinely don't feel like I have enough content to to have post daily, and nor do I feel like anyone cares enough to, to see that to see us post daily. <laughs> You know what I mean? That, that's a hard. That's a hard battle I have to do with, yeah. deal with, with the podcast. Yeah. It's like, okay, what what do I what do I do? Because I I have all this content, right? But it's a hard ass to get somebody to sit down and, and listen to an hour long podcast, right? Yeah. Uh, but for for you musicians out there, definitely key: record your gigs, record you practicing. Yeah. Get as much video and photo content of yourself. Because that is going to be so much, and even if it's amateur, mm -hmm. even at least you have it. So that way, when someone comes up to you and says, "Oh, uh, we're kind of cons we're considering maybe you for an opener. What uh, can you give us a, a demo, or can you give us, you know, uh, right. a, a live video? What yeah. you guys look a like? Any more? Any more that they want live vid live live footage? Because you can manipulate so many things. Yeah." I'm, and I'm sure there's people that have done it. I don't. I don't know of anyone, but I'm sure that's why venues are like, no, don't send me a, a song. Yeah, MP3s. Yeah. Yeah, like, I want to know that you can do this. Yeah, I want to see you up there live. Right. Correct. Uh, no strings. Yes. And it is so important to because not, not only do you get that content for yourself, but you can start. And then you can start creating uh, mashup videos. You can start right. creating compilations. Right. You can start. Creating a, a brand for yourself yeah. with, through these vi uh, visuals, even if they're amateur. Yeah. Even if they're quote unquote amateur, mm -hmm. it's a starting place. Yeah. And from there, you're going to meet some. There's so many photographers that do this uh, out of uh, passion anyway. Yeah. F find somebody. Yeah. Uh, and the, and uh, there's a few that I, I could list off. Amanda Daughter. Da uh, Daughter? Uh, I, wish I, I wish I had <laughs> better. Uh, but there, there are photographers around in Lancaster that mm -hmm. that you go out to an open mic. There's a lot of there's like cameras there. Right. Oh yeah. Find that person. Yeah. Talk to them. Hey, would you do a photo show with me? It's and 
do a photo shoot. Yeah. As a musician, that's you have to uh, create your mar- your image, your marketing. Yeah. No one yeah. else is gonna do it for right, you. Right. Exactly. And to to get a third party source, it's it's almost not worth it because they don't know. Right. They don't know you. They don't right. know your exactly. audience. Yeah. You, there's there's personal connections. Granted, I think music is the biggest thing. But oh, like, for sure. But in all of the arts, there's personal connections to be made, and I think I think. Today, some of that stuff, like the personal connections, is getting neglected. Be- instead of like, how can it- too many people are like, how can this person help me? Like, connect first, and then before you even realize it, you're going to be you, your new friend is going to be taking your pictures because they're your new new friend. Instead of instead of they, just they actually swapping, like you, yeah, because instead of like trying to set up some transaction right at the get go, yeah, don't uh, yeah. Here's another tip: don't create transactional friends. Yeah, absolutely. Because those aren't real no. friends. No. Uh, trust your gut too. Trust. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Trust. If you if something seems sketchy, it probably is. It probably is. Yeah. It, you have a gut feeling for a reason. You have yeah. you have all of these uh, intuitive senses for a reason. Uh, it's know know your situation. Get out of it if you need to. Uh, and that and you have to be okay with that too. There's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Even even on stage, yeah. Be you know recognize okay this is a bad situation I should probably get out right. of here, and that's God forbid that happens. But trust your gut. Yeah. Um and but back to the back to the friendships. Tr- truly, if you don't know how to start with a friendship, if you see someone take pictures with you, you don't have to immediately go into transaction phase. It's like right, oh I, yeah. I I saw you took pictures. Do yeah. you do this for a living? Right. You know, this what kind of camera is that? What kind of camera is that? Yeah. Uh, uh, where can I follow you to yeah. see all your all your right, work? Yeah. Um, and then work work that relationship that way. Yeah. As opposed to, hey, I saw you take a picture of you. Can you send it to me? Yeah. Um, and because that's that's so plastic when exactly, it comes up to yeah. that. Uh, that's uh, you. And they'll you, remember you better too. Even they'll if, remember you so yeah. much. It's not what you say; it's how you make them feel. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and that's the the truest device ever. If if you want to. Uh, and don't 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 be mani- manipulative about right. it. But if you want to make a connection and you want to network, yeah, the step is becoming friends first. Right, connect connect before you network, and and you can try to connect, and there's nothing there, and that's fine. That's fine. You're not gonna connect with everyone. No, there are some people who are you you might anti connect. Right. With. Oh yeah. There's gonna be people who don't like your music. There's gonna be people who people who don't like their photography. Any 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 art. Pred- any art is open to interpretation, but good art can bring people together. I feel like, and I, I strive to make good art. Yeah, that should be your goal. Yeah, make good art, make good times. Yeah, and then and I ultimately, I think it's just to connect people as as much as possible, and and to be a part of that connection is to me just just so special. So I have a few general questions. So okay. we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I got. I don't think I got to ask you this last time. But uh, what is worship to you? Being able to be in the moment, regardless of what you're, what's putting you there. Um, I think that in a weird way, this, this might not even make sense to most people, but I think in a, in a weird way, sports and music and being caught up in your painting or what what i think being caught in the moment passion. is caught yeah, exactly caught up in the moment of passion is is in, in itself a worship I, I it's a gut feeling i have it's not anything in, anybody's really ever told me but i feel like in those moments you're most connected with um instead of people with yourself yeah, we, yeah. yeah exactly yes and, <laughs> and i, I, and I think that's the most um respect but the best way you can treat yourself is to give yourself those moments because those moments make everything else better yeah if that makes no, sense you're I, right i think I, I i've never been a person to necessarily like believe what people tell me right like off the get-go so like i don't necessarily think in the same along the same alleys as some like I hear the word worship, and I understand what a lot of people think of it, but I feel like that's because that's they, they, what they were told. That's what they were told, right? That's what it looks like. And I feel like over the years, I've been lucky enough to just give myself an understanding of what it is to me and 
that's what it is for me. I, I feel like I don't necessarily feel like I, because in those moments, w- without necessarily verbalizing it, I am so thankful and so. You're there. You're present. You are acknowledging yeah. the gifts that God yes, gave you. Yes, and, and I feel like that in itself is, to me, is more authentic worship than looking around and doing what the same thing that everyone else is doing. Like I don't, I understand why that sense creates a sense of community. Yeah, don't get corporate, me wrong. Corporate worship has its place. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 I understand why that gives people a sense of community. But when it comes to individual, individual, and like your own relationship with with God and with the universe itself, like I just feel like that's it to me. Yeah. Definitely. And it's it's definitely a source of uh self care for yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Cuz it's it's uh, have you seen Soul? No. I haven't. No. I my wife my 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 wife and I are trying to watch it before we let the kids watch it and we just haven't got around to it. We don't have that much time. It's a movie yeah, worth seeing. Yeah, I I've heard that and I I I have I'm on a stay at home dad page on Facebook and I've heard that too, so uh, we just haven't got around to doing it yet. Um, it, so there, there's a concept in that where, uh, uh, you know, every every soul has its purpose, has yeah. its whatever. And then whenever they're actually actively doing that, they go to this ethereal other place. Okay. And uh, and that's like, that's that's like whenever you're in the moment. Yeah, yeah, like, it's quote, the concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that like the where you, you where you aren't even thinking, you're just right. doing. Yes. And that yeah. I think that's like the perfect allegory for yeah. what worship is. You yeah, are. Absolutely. Taking your talent, your passion, yeah, whatever it is, you are fully in the moment. You don't care about anything right. else around you. Yeah. It and you are giving full into the talents that God yeah. gave you. Right. That uh and you are And you worked hard for it. And th- that you worked yeah. hard for, yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh talents aren't anything without right. growing them. Exactly. And uh, nurturing them. But y- you are doing what you love, you are uh, and you are showing off that gift to the world. Yeah. And that's what worship is. Yeah. Showing off your gifts, in my opinion, showing off your gifts uh, of God uh, that God gave you yeah. to the world. Yeah. Two last questions. Okay. These are new questions that I've added to yeah. the Musk asked. Uh, Musk, must, must ask. <laughs> I got to get my words right. Uh, what is one of the best pieces of advice anyone has ever given you? Hmm. Trust the music, I think. I think that we're lucky in, we're in an, an era that we've heard so many things that we have a general understanding of like what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. And just because a something might not fall into that category doesn't necessarily mean it can't be used. Bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, you have to make, you have to make a decision. Say you have, I, I, I want to go. I'm not sure where I want to go with this next chord. Both of these chords sound good, but like you ultimately have to just choose one. Choose one, and 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 I. When I make those choices, I feel like I'm not deciding per se. Mm. I, I I go back and forth, and I don't. I, I try to subconsciously make a decision. Um, and that's in, in itself a conscious decision. Yeah. But at the same time. I'm trying to let everything else. It's what am I trying to feel here? What What am I trying? To, to you're getting be, rid of your personal right, biases. Yeah, right, you're, yes. You are being a musician and yeah. a- analytically figuring out this. What this is what best best serves the song, yeah. best serves the mood, best serves, and that's you know. And like I think, I said, and I think, atmosphere. even though Tom Petty didn't give me the advice, the quote that I mentioned earlier from Sound City, I think I, that's something that I've I've tried to frame my work around as well. So it, would that also bleed into the next question? What's one of the most memorable lessons you've ever learned? Yeah, yeah, very well, yeah, very much so. I mean, because I, as a songwriter, like I, I'm very much influenced by Dave Matthews Band as well, and he oh, yeah. he does some very, very unique things unique on guitar. Things. And like there was times where I'm, I felt like I was trying to write t- too funky or too cool or too unique, that, like too cluttered, right? And and there's there's times for that, and there's there's songs where that type of stuff works, but there's songs where that doesn't, and I had to recognize that there's songs that that doesn't. Like "Put Your Shoes On" is one of my m- more simpler songs, as far as the chord progression goes, um, and and even like it's a three three chords, and I came up with that idea knowing 
like the, the point of view that, that Tom Petty described, and it's actually a similar similar chord, pro- chord progression to Melissa by the Allman Brothers. Mm. Um, but I just don't go. Like, I, I don't hit the F sharp minor twice. I just hit it once. Um, but the way I laid it out, I hit the an E minor a lot before I do that run back down. And it's three chords, but laid out in a way that it's very recognizable. Yeah, and, and that's that's another thing. Uh, know the the purpose of your song. Yeah. Know the extent yeah. of your song. Yeah. Uh, because every song should have a purpose. There are great ideas you can have for a song. Yeah. If it doesn't serve the song, put it in your back pocket. Right, and there's going to be great lines you write for songs that you realize don't Do match not. the song, yes. but the line is good. So yes. save those. Say, and uh, this is this is just you know preaching to the choir here. Uh, have a notebook with you at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, it write physically write stuff down. That's yeah. how you remember Absolutely, the best. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I go into my phone sometimes. Like if I don't have a notebook with me, I'm like, oh, that's good. I totally forgot I did that. But it's because I didn't write it down. It's because you didn't write yeah. it down, right? Um, it's stuff like that. Do it. Make sure you have. Uh, and and. You have to be okay with letting it go. You, yeah. Biggest thing, get rid of your ego when you're writing your music. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because it's not in the it's not end. About it's, you. It's not about you. It's no. not for you. No. Uh, it's it's you. You as a musician should be creating for others. Yes, absolutely. That is your primary goal. Yeah. That is where you're gonna find the most joy, the yeah. most success, the most gratification. Oh yeah. Over a longer period of time. Is if you create this song for others to enjoy. Yeah. If granted, you can. Th- there are times to show off your talent. That's totally right. fine. That's totally fine because right. oftentimes it serves the song anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, if you have that unique idea and and you are you really want it in there, but it's like oh, it, yeah. you, you know, you're teetering on it. Uh, go with what your gut says. Oh yeah. And put that away for a different song. Yeah. Or write a song around that idea. I was gonna say exactly that, that exact thing. Yeah, take that idea and make it its own thing. Yeah, yeah. There are. It's you can make so many songs. Yeah, and tell yourself that you can do it. So much of so much of it is just knowing that you you're capable. Like if you don't if you don't think you're capable of, some, of doing something, you're not gonna do it. Don't let your talk be talk. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Don't say I'm going to. I'm yeah. almost there. Yeah. Don't say I. Uh, I just need this one yeah. thing. You have the te- if you have a phone at least you have the technology right. to do absolutely anything with music. Yeah, and it, it's kind of overwhelming when it comes to the, the internet and music. But what I'm trying to do with this band really doesn't have much to do with the internet oh. aside from the marketing aspect of it. Like just I, letting people know I that just, you're there. Yeah, I just yeah. want to connect people. Like yeah. I don't care about connecting the internet to. Whatever you know what I mean, like, like I, I, I think this it's very, the band feels very organic to me, mm-hmm. and I feel I think that's something that I've I've recognized with each band member when they come in, and they stick, is that they just have an organic feel to to them as a human, and their approach to the music, and their ideas. Yeah, yeah. the the internet should truly be a a, a vessel, a a method of reaching, right. of connecting people. Yeah. And yeah, for marketing that is a semi requirement depending yeah. on you know what what your goal is. Um, but don't let it consume. The goal is people in person. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. That's that's the dream. Yeah. That's the gold. Yeah. That's that's should be your goal. Yeah. Is to do that and. Shout out to Stage Rush, one of the ways you can do it. Have you ever right. heard of Stage yeah. Rush? Yeah. Just, I just uh, created an account, actually. Yeah, Stage Rush. Um, if you're a, a musician who struggles, who doesn't know who, who to email, uh, right. this is not sponsored, by the way. I just really yeah. love their service. And uh, they're both great friends of mine. Um, so Stage Rush is a place where if you're a musician, you don't know who who to email, because <laughs> that's the one thing I struggle with. Who the heck do I email to get oh, in this yeah. venue? Yeah. Right? And then, then you have to worry about writing an email. Then you have to worry about, oh, is this professional or not? It gets rid of all of that. You can sign up on Stage Rush for free yeah. as well. You can, there are paid options, but you can do it for free. And it's a spot where venues are also there. Yeah. That you can apply. Say, if I sign up as a musician, I can apply to Telus. I can apply to, I think, Fetish is on there as well. Or all of these local companies. Yeah. 
uh, companies' venues um, and such. It, it's all in one spot. Super easy. Super, super UI uh, user friendly. Yeah, very. And uh, it, it's even on mobile. You uh, like the oh, website nice. on mobile. Nice. Uh, well, I do. I use my computer when I filled it out. Yeah, but yeah, you, they don't have. An, I don't think they have an app yet. Yeah, but. Even on their website, it's <laughs> that was their goal. Is that you can go on their on their website and yeah. have it be mobile friendly, right? Yeah, and it's so so. It, it's kind of funny. Um, I, uh, I I I lacked on doing the mobile thing because I was like, every website on mobile just gone awful. Like, right, blah, blah, blah. but I did it perfectly fine. Nice, awesome. Yeah, it's I I can't I can't recommend Stage Rush enough. If you are a band, even if you're an established band and you're still because let's be honest. And venues are constantly like having turnover with who is there, like their employee who does booking. So like you could be emailing someone who just Doesn't left two weeks anymore. ago. Yeah, and it, it's it's so hard because yeah, who who knows this person that knows this person that knows that person? Right. You have to figure out who's played there before and right. figure out, and it, it, it's so much. Oh, I know a guy who who knows this guy. Yeah. That, and then then that, that, that's the guy that you have to email. Right. Yeah. And here's here's maybe his email. I don't know if it's <laughs> whatever. And venues are always making changes all the time. Oh anyway. yeah, all the time. Uh, whether it be website or personnel. Yeah. Um, Stage Rush is a great place. It's all in one spot. You can promote your stuff stuff through there. Uh, it's you can do it for free. You can. It, they even let you take it off off their website, which is. Crazy that yeah. uh, that they would they, you know they're just being a facilitator for it right. Check out Stage Rush. If you uh, wrapping up this episode, there are a few jams that are happening today. There's Strummer Strummer Jam that's happening over in Millsville at Fandom Power, uh, run by a former guest John Flavin uh, from the Ogham Stones. He's going to be performing there as well as I do believe Leo DeSanto will also be there. I could be wrong in that, but I'm pretty sure that's what I saw. But uh. Then later on tonight, Tell Us 360, there will be a, uh, an amazing country artist, Catherine Britt. Uh, she's only there for tonight, so that's at uh, 6 p.m. at Tell Us 360. Also tonight is uh, Joe Segan over at Lancaster at the C- Cartel Beer Garden from 4 to 7. That's completely free. Go check out check them out. If you want to support this podcast, be sure to like Follow, subscribe, share with your friends. That is the way we grow. That's the way we have been growing. If you want to uh, really support us, <laughs> you can uh, buy merchandise. We have stickers. We have our hoodies uh, and shirts. That will be uh, limited time. There will be once they're sold out, it's gone. Uh, that's, that's another thing I've, I've been trying to work out: marketing funds and, and uh, shirts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. Uh, be sure to do that if you want to uh, check out RJ. He's on Facebook, Rascal Revival. Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify. We actually have our own website too, rascalrevivalmusic.com. Check him out there. I'm sure all of your events will be on there. Yep. So, yep. I try yeah. to keep him on up to date on all of our pages, but yeah. Be be aware for that single that you heard earlier to yep. come out September 16th. Yep. And September 30th, they'll be at the Anklewood. At the Anklewood. Trying to remember if I have anything else to say. Oh, by the way, we'll, we'll, we will be starting our album slash single reviews very oh, soon. Nice. We already have uh, my first co-host, co-host, Liam Galliano, your first nice. bassist, right? Yeah, he was, yep. Your, uh, your, your, uh, his first bassist, we'll, we'll be getting that soon. So if you want to be a part of that, there are forms on, I really got to make a website. Uh, <laughs> There are there are forms uh, through a Facebook page if if you want to have your single old or new by the way you don't have to have new material to submit this because let's let's be real as a, as a local musician it's hard to get your stuff reviewed yeah. and it's hard to get your stuff out there it is uh, so I we I, this is a service I want to do and better to better support the local community to uh, help promote good because there's some amazing amazing work out here yeah. That don't that just go on the radar because they're not somebody. Yeah, right. Yep. And so if you want to be a part of that and you want your stuff to be reviewed, go ahead. And you can DM the the story podcast. You can DM me, uh, Corey Rosen. You can, uh, and I, I will gladly, happily send you the link. I might put it on a link tree. That's what I should do. Yeah. Link tree slash yeah, the story podcast. Go. Yeah, that, that's go. one way to do it. Um, and. Upcoming is a, a hundredth episode. 
It's crazy. It's only nice. wow. it started since April, and yeah. it's already was that four months. And already on my hundredth episode. For that, we will be doing a a Q and A. Q&A. I there are uh, plans and works to have pe- former uh, members or other people to come on and interview me for a change. Oh, nice. See 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 how that works. That'll be our first uh, more of more of a panel kind yeah. of kind of discussion. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, and if you have any uh, Q and As you want to ask me, there's a form you can fill out also on Facebook, and I'll put that also in the link tree. Uh, uh, if you want to support uh, or ask me a question, personal, whatever, be f- be sure to do it there. Uh, with all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and. We will see you tomorrow when I have on another guest that I am, P- Peter Mastro Pietro. I think, pretty sure that's how nice. you pronounce the last name. He's an uh, owner of Mastro Music. He is a booking agent. Oh, nice. He is also uh, an amazing percussionist, an amazing person. This Actually, this whole week, I'm, I'm having a great number of guests. We have Heather Grayberg on Tuesday. She's the owner and CEO of Revival Productions over in Coatesville. A really uh, good friend of mine, uh, and she does incredible work as 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 an incredible person. Coatesville is where I did my student teaching. Yeah, yeah. You do student teaching. Yeah, that's I did. cool. Yeah, I would just want to be a, a teacher. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. You said that. Yeah. By the way, we also did a whole other episode of of this. You can find that on Spotify, where he talks, where RJ talks about uh, being a stay at home dad, what that entails, yeah. all the important stuff there, all yeah. sports, passions, uh, talking about. All sorts of things. Talk a little bit about science, I think, too. Yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's more of his work over there as well. More yeah. of, uh, yeah, some uh, songs from the EP. And more of the in- insights into those songs yeah. as well. So yeah. Be sure to check that episode out. Um, this Wednesday, we're having Stephanie Grace, a amazing uh, artist from Up and Reading. She's, she's open for Taylor Swift and a, a bunch of other country artists. Incredible, incredible lady. And then the, finally Thursday, we have Nick DeSanto, the one-man band himself, nice. coming on and talking about that project. Nice. With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you guys later. Yeah, thanks for having me.